Welcome, everybody, to the return of Talking Points, powered by Bodog.net. I am Stu Stone, and returning, ladies and gentlemen, the ace of this lineup, the one and only Ricky Romero. Ricky, welcome back. Another season of Blue Jays baseball. They brought us in. They they made the call to the pen for the second <laughs> half of the season. Rare to see you working out of the pen, but you are back. I am back. We're talking Jays. It's a good time to be talking Jays, isn't it, Ricky? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. First off, I'm really glad to see you again, to be chatting uh, about about the Jays and amongst other things. But yeah, man, it's it's one of those things where right now it's exciting. They have they they got it going again. I feel like it's been a little bit of an up and down season. Uh, I feel like the fans get really frustrated and then they get really, really happy. But that's the ebbs and flow, right, of a season. That's just the way it goes. And right now they seem to be clicking on all cylinders. And um, and and you just hope that their pitching continues to to dominate as they go along and and the hitting, uh, you know, does their part. And I think they're going to be just all right. They're going to be they're going to be uh, they're going to be there contending for a playoff spot. You, you talk about the like ebbs and flows of a season and the Blue Jays have been pretty consistent all season, I will say. They haven't had that 10-game winning streak yet. They haven't had a 10-game losing streak. They've had some losing streaks, but they haven't gone into a complete and utter funk yet either. I Have we, you know, all these other teams, Tampa started out so hot, Ricky. Baltimore obviously has like, you know, they're on fire right now. Are we still waiting for the Blue Jays to do their, you know, have their run? Well, you, the crazy thing is they're, they're 14 games over 500 right now. And yes. that's, I mean, in every other division, they're in first place. They're dominating the division. Yeah. But as we know, the AOEs is just a different beast. And, and what they're doing right now is has them good enough for third place, which is insanely crazy. It but, isn't seen that people would be complaining when you're 15 games <laughs> over 500. <laughs> it is, right? I mean, but that's just, you know, the Baltimore Orioles have been just as good. The Tampa Bay Rays obviously got off to a hot start and they've kind of cooled off a little bit. But yes, I think to your question, the Blue Jays have not hit that point where they've just taken off. We've seen it and then it kind of goes away. We see it and then it kind of goes away. So we're just still waiting, waiting for that six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten game winning streak or something where they go, you know, they win 15 out of the next, you know, 18 games, 20 games. And you're just like, okay, they start separating themselves from the rest. And I don't think we've seen that yet from the Jays, but I feel like it's coming. It could. And, and you know what? September would be a great time for it to come. <laughs> I mean, yeah, whoever I mean, gets hot, whoever gets hot last, that's who you want to be. Isn't that right? Exactly. Yeah. And and this is a team, obviously, that came in with so many high expectations and this and that and all the hoopla around that. But at the end of the day, it's the game of baseball. We, we you have to go out there and you have to get 27 outs. You have to win the ball game and and anything can happen on any given night. And that's the beauty of this game. But yes, if you get hot at the right time, those are the teams that obviously go into the playoffs hot and then just remain hot throughout the playoffs. So I don't think they've hit their peak yet. Uh, I feel like we've seen bits and pieces, but once this team puts it together and they're, if they're able to carry something hot into the playoffs, when they get there, then they're going to be really fun to watch. I totally agree with you. And I'm really excited about it. And it's very interesting that like that you heard a lot of about names that were potentially going to be available at the trade deadline that, that passes a few weeks back, you know, obviously Shohei Otane's name came up. He's not going anywhere. Uh, although they probably wish that they had done something with him. <laughs> uh, you know, you heard Juan Soto's name being floated around, but, you know, San Diego's not throwing in the towel. You saw some big pitching names go from here to there. The Blue Jays made, you know, a couple little bullpen tweaks, but really they brought in Jordan Hicks, who, you know, has got that triple-digit heat, which people have been asking for. And they brought <laughs> in, uh, you know, uh, uh, De DeYoung, who – Obviously, with Bo's injury, they had to make a pivot right quick there. But they didn't make any kind of splashy Troy Tulowitzki, David Price kind of move. Yet, the Jays are 15 games over 500 as of this recording. They're, they've got a lot of depth. What does that say about the state of this team that they didn't really add a huge name and we're still talking about going on a run? 
Yeah, well, the crazy thing about the trade deadline and everyone gets worked up over it. Everyone thinks that, oh, we should go out and get so-and-so. We should go out and get so-and-so. Well, you know what? It takes two teams to tangle. And it's not just about, hey, I'm going to put in a request for Shohei Otani and then the Angels are just going to accept the deal. It just doesn't work like that. And I think sometimes people get so caught up in that, like, oh, why didn't we make this deal? Why didn't we make? Well, shoot, sometimes the right pieces are not there. What the Angels are looking for are probably not there. What other teams are looking for is not there. So it's just one of those things that just it just happens in the trade deadline. I feel like everyone becomes a GM and everyone thinks making a deal is easy, which is not. Um, but at the end of the day, I think sometimes the best deals are the ones that you didn't make. And you just trust the guys that you've been running out there um, for the first part of the season. And, 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 and you continue to grind with them. I mean, we saw a lot of teams, Stu, that made deals this, this trade deadline. And it has done nothing for them. Nope. Angels being one of them. Yep. Uh, they, they brought in, you know, two big bats and Crone and Richick. And then uh, Arizona Diamondbacks made some moves and they have struggled since. So. Sometimes, like I said, the best moves are the ones that you didn't make. And, and, and sometimes maybe they were asking for the world and you're like, you know what? We're not ready to part with any of these guys yet. Yeah. So let's just continue to grind out with the guys that we have. We still see the potential in this team. And, and, and that's just the way it happens. Again, we're going back to the hottest team going into the playoffs is the one that usually wins. It also speaks a lot about like the roster, the way that it's set up right now. You know, Chapman obviously is going to be a free agent. He's probably going to be getting paid a killion dollars next year, uh, <laughs> and not in Toronto. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier was on a one-year deal. Uh, Whit Merrifield, I think, has like a, a, a mutual option. Jays were not sellers. They're 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 going for it, even with just two moves. But I do like the addition of Hicks, especially you know you bring in Hicks and Jordan Romano goes down. It's like. Yeah. Perfect timing, right? Perfect timing. Yeah. Well, and, and it's one of those things where I feel like pitching, uh, especially relievers, I mean, to have depth there is is what you need. And and I feel like a little bit of where they lacked depth earlier this season was with starting pitching. When Manoa started going through his struggles, they really didn't have a guy that they could call up. It was they ran out four starters and and, and kind of played and, and then and Trevor Richards. Yeah. And I feel like that was limiting them because Trevor Richards at the time was one of the best relievers in that bullpen. And a guy has done a tremendous job all year and he's done everything they've asked him. And you know how hard it is to go from reliever to starter back to reliever and stuff like that. So he's, he's been up to the task. So you got to tip your hat to what he's and done this he, season. And then, and then he got hurt probably. And, because yeah. Of the workload who knows, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So it's one of those things where I feel like uh, anytime you add depth of pitching to an organization, that's great. And, what great timing for Jordan Hicks to come into this bullpen. Like you mentioned, Jordan Romano going down, and now he kind of steps into that role. Swanson has been pretty damn good at, at the back end of that rotation. Tim Mesa, I mean, yeah. he. I mean, to me, he's one of the unsung heroes of this team. The guy just keeps getting called upon, and he keep, just comes in and does the job. And um, to me, like I said, he's been as valuable as any reliever, and, and probably got, in the big leagues. And I think he's like also, if I'm not mistaken, the longest tenured Blue Jay. Like, was he like the last man standing from those like playoff teams? It, ooh, I, I'd have to go have back to and check on that one. That. But it, yeah. I feel he's like one of the last guys left from that era. Um, probably, but but he's a guy that again, like man, when you watch him, I mean, he's from the left right. side. He's a, he's like six four, and it's 94, 96 sinking at you. Oh, yeah. So he's a guy that's been completely, completely dominated this season. He's in the zone. And, you know, uh, Jimmy Garcia has been, has had his struggles, but it looks like he's start, sort of figuring it out, starting to figure it out and be the guy that we know he is. There's a lot of depth in this bullpen. And I saw, you know, Ryu unfortunately got hit the other day. I don't know the status of his injury, but as of this recording, you know, they were going to go with a six man rotation. They, that may not have to happen anymore if Ryu is actually hurt again, but the depth is up and down. This is a, a lineup that is built and it's got depth and the bench has depth. And that brings me to the hottest talking point of the week, which I will bring up to you right now. I'm going to say two words to you and I'm going to ask for your immediate reaction to these two words. Hopefully, these words will still be meaningful by the time people see this video clip. Those two words are Davis Schneider. Unbelievable, man. What a story. What a story, right? I mean, I feel like he is um, 
he is the definition of a grinder to be a 28th round pick that 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 pick doesn't even exist anymore in in today's draft which is crazy to me i i i tweeted about it a while back i said man it's time we go back to the old draft because we're missing out on these stories we're missing out on the guys who continue to chase that dream who were low draft picks and 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 they make it and these are the david uh schneiders of the world kevin pilar another example of a guy that wasn't expected to be in the big leagues and he grinded through the minor leagues just like davis has and and boom now he's made a career for himself 10 plus probably years in the big leagues and 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 the fact that davis has come off to a scorching start i mean what 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 a story um but i will say this dude just how we're building him up let's make sure we um we continue to support him when those struggles come because they are going to come. I mean, it's the big leagues. Everyone struggles. Sure. And, and right now he's on such a high and I hope he's riding this wave. I'm sure he is. And everyone's riding the wave with him, but let's make sure we pick him up when, when those struggles come, because um, you know, last year, Santiago Espinal was the guy, right? I mean, he was hot. He, he made the all-star team and we, you know, we were thinking a lot highly of him and, and I feel like this year he's the forgotten man. And it's like, oh, send them down to AAA. And, well, and that's this funny and that. that you can mention that. So the depth of the Jays is a blessing and a curse because with the emergence of a David Schneider, assuming he's still tearing it up by the time people see this or hear this, you know, you've got some decisions to make. You know, Boba Shett's going to come back. And I, I guess Kevin Kiermeyer is now injured. So this decision is maybe a little bit easier. But who's the odd man out? Because it's you got Kevin Biggio who for all intents and purposes has a little bit more intangibles, even though he's, you know, hitting not really good for average, but, you know, he has clutch home runs and he's made, yeah, I mean, he won a single-handedly won a game against the guardians, uh, but he's a <laughs> left-handed bat. So he's an intangible. You got basically Santiago Espinal or you, or the young, I mean, who, who's going down? Yeah. I, I think, for for his or sake, David Schneider, uh, does he go down and you bring him back as a number? I think it just depends on where we're at with Bo, and once he comes back, where David Schneider is, how he's going. Right? I mean, right now, like I said, he's on such a high; he's hitting the ball well. But once Bo comes back, um, it's either going to be. If if he starts to struggle a little bit, obviously it'll be an easy decision. But if he continues to hit, then yeah, there's no way in hell they're they're sending him down. So, so what do you do in, if, you're, if you're Ross Atkins? What do you do? I think, in my opinion, um, Santiago Espinal is probably the odd man out, a guy that probably should be playing, uh, getting enough playing time, uh, getting reps. So for him to go down to Triple A and you know finish off there and maybe you know get his confidence back at the plate. Um, and and just just get reps. I don't think uh, he's a guy that obviously um, belongs on the bench right now. Obviously, right now, the odds are against him. I mean, yeah. what what Davis is doing, you can, you you can't take him out of the lineup. So in order for for Santiago to get those reps, would only be one way, and it's for him to 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 be able to go down to AAA and maybe get get him down there and 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 come up and and be a different guy. I mean, that's just what sometimes what it takes. I mean, it's just a a stint down there and 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 kind of get your confidence back but to me he seems to be the odd man out right now davis schneider the mustache the glasses five foot nine <laughs> you know just like that sort of goofy sort of you know like nice guy sort of a he just looks like a guy you would like walk by in the hallway at high in high school and not even look at him twice and here he is in the big leagues he made his debut at fenway park he crushed two home runs over the monster in the <laughs> weekend series i think he had nine hits hit by a pitch you know he did a little bit of everything he played a little left field he played a little second base he kind of did everything do you remember where you made your major league debut obviously you do and uh where was that and was you know i'm wondering about the nerves going into that was it yeah no for you or was it I, did you get rocked i made it in toronto and it was a day game it was a getaway game uh we were flying that night or that day after the game i remember we were gonna, I was going to be on my first road trip, which was to Cleveland to face the Guardians. And, and I remember the first thing I told myself when I walked out to the mound was, do not look to the third deck. Do not look at the third deck. And I looked up, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this stadium is huge. Um, and obviously, it wasn't a sellout or anything like that. Like I said, it was a day game. And 
once um, I threw that first pitch to Curtis Granderson, I mean, I still remember, obviously, it was like, okay, like I got it out of me and now it's just time to work. I mean, my my heart was beating so fast. My legs were like kind of shaking, not because I was scared, but because I was anxious and I couldn't believe the moment, man. I mean, an East LA kid uh, making his major league debut, my parents, my my uh, brother, my sisters all there. And I was just like, this is, this is magical. Like you, I couldn't have scripted this any better. And the fact that we were able to get a win. So I wasn't that, that uh, guy, you know, making his debut was searching for his first win. It's like, I got it on my first start, got it out of the way. And then from there, it was just time to go to work. And, and, and it, it was, it was a fun ride, man. Who was your first K? Maglio Ordonez. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. On a pitch that I never, ever threw. <laughs> but for some reason, uh, who was my catch? Michael Barrett was my catcher wow, on a, my major league debut. Yeah. <laughs> and he called for a slider. I hardly ever threw sliders. And I was like, my major league debut, I can't shake off this guy. Here you go. Throw a slider. And Magali was swung at it. And I got my first strikeout, which is crazy. Again, a slider. I never even threw a slider in, 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 uh, in my career. It was just that that game, I think, or maybe – you know, the first few games of the of the season where I messed around with the slider and they kept calling it. So I just kept oh, is there like ex- like when Vaglio swings him is does he like look out at you? Is there like a is an exchange of some sorts between you guys? Or are you just sort of so excited you turn around and like you don't even want to look? I remember it was a third out of the inning. So I okay, kind of just made it easier. I just like ran out of the field. Yeah. yeah, I just I just I used to as a rookie, I used to remember um after every inning I like jog fast to the dugout and i remember one time one of the veteran guys was like hey young kid like slow down a little bit man you can walk off the mound like we're not like timed here this is not college baseball anymore and i was like okay so then that's when i kind of get a little bit more camera time yeah a little bit more camera time and i kind of started working on my on my strut a lot better (laughs) romero strut not quite the regular strut but it it was a work in progress (laughs) uh all right, let's talk about a guy that you were around that is going to be honored, or by the time people listen to this, already honored, rightfully so, getting his spot in the level of excellence. The slugger himself, Jose Bautista, is uh, going to be honored by the Toronto Blue Jays, or already was honored, depending on when you're listening to this. How important, I, I have something to say about Jose, but let's go with you first. How important is Jose Bautista and how much does he actually deserve to be on the level of excellence? Yeah, I think when you look at his story and is it, this is a lesson to all players out there, whether you're in the minor leagues and the big leagues and have bounced around teams, this is the guy that bounced around a few organizations before he landed with the Toronto Blue Jays in 2008, I believe. And I remember him coming in as a, when I was a rookie in 2009, and he was, <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of people remember that he was a third baseman and then he shifted to right field because at the time it was Alex Rios who was in right field, Vernon Wells was in center and who was in left field. I think Adam Lynn might've been in left field. Um, so there was really no spot for Jose. And I remember third baseman uh, when Scott Rowland would have a day off, he was the guy that would fill in. So, um, so I remember him kind of just being a grinder when it first, when, when, when I first met him and I always like watched him and I was like, wow, if this guy ever got an opportunity, you just see the, the talent that oozes out of him and you just see the batting practice that he takes, you see the swings that he takes. And, and I think once he worked himself into that lineup in 09, you saw a different guy, you saw a more confident guy and you saw a guy that was like, all right, now he's getting the best out of his abilities and with with with, with the right opportunity. And I think you got to credit, obviously, at the time, it was uh, Dwayne Murphy, our hitting coach, um, and Cito Gaston. I mean, they believed in him. They went out there and 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 they did their thing with him. And and I think they made him believe in himself. And the next thing you know, it's like every year, 2010 was magical for him. 11 was even more magical as he's hitting all those home runs, back-to-back uh, home run king. As, as I used to call them. Um, and, and then obviously, you know, the bat flip. I mean, uh, that, I feel like that, that turned everything around. And I think when, when, uh, when they made those trades in 2015 and they brought all those guys in, I mean, I think it was 
to one to obviously help the team and two to give him some help because I feel like for a, for a few years during that time he had carried the organization he had carried the offense and now they were giving him the proper protection obviously it was him and Edwin for all those years um and I then mean, Edwin is another he, guy that you'll probably see on the level of excellence next similar 100% 100% and 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 to your point right there I think there's three guys obviously Jose is very deserving Edwin um will someday hopefully go up there too. And there's a third guy and 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 I feel like he's he's near and dear to my heart because he he went through the tough times of being a Toronto Blue Jay, Vernon Wells. I think oh, for a yeah. long time. He's not already he, up there? No. Well, oh, which is he'll, crazy. He'll be, up there. he'll be up there. Yeah, he should be. I think he should be just yeah. because for a long time he held all those records. Oh, he and, was the guy. He was the guy. Yeah, now here's exactly. here's the thing about Bautista. Obviously you know him. You know him. You were his teammate. I'm just a fan in the stands, okay? But here's what I have to say about Jose, and I might catch a little flack for this, but Jose Bautista to the Toronto Blue Jays is like Vince Carter for the Raptors. I feel like Jose Bautista brought baseball back. It was dead for 20 years of, from 93 to whatever. The stadium was not full. There was not a yeah. buzz around the Blue Jays. There was nothing. Vernon Wells was playing in front of empty seats a lot, and he shouldn't have, but he did. Jose Bautista brought the put the magnifying glass back on the franchise by being the home run king that he was and coming up in the big under the bright lights bigger than anybody. And in 2015, it still hurts that they didn't win the World Series because, yeah. you know, I, you, I don't know who you blame for that. I don't know. But you can't ask for more than what Jose Bautista did for you in that run in 2015. Not only that against texas the bat flip the greatest home run that i ever saw on television you know <laughs> maybe even joe carter you know joe carter is obviously the one but Jose yeah. Bautista is right there it's in the conversation almost equal footing depending on the yeah. generation of the person you ask yeah but i mean there, there there's 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 he's definitely obviously like you said joe carter that that can't be beat he is the man he is the guy it, i mean to end a world series like that it doesn't get any better than that but um, but what Bautista was able to do and how he and we 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 went through those. Th I was with him, you know, in nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, parts of thirteen when we weren't that good and we were supposed to be good. Some a few years in thirteen, we go yeah, sure. out and get big. John Josh Johnson, Mark Burley, and uh, Jose Reyes, and you load up this team and we thought, you know, here we are, we're gonna we're gonna go in and have this 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 great team and it doesn't happen and again that's why i said it earlier in the show it's the game of baseball anything can happen anybody can be beat at any given day and if you're just not clicking on all cylinders you're just not going to win we look at the san diego padres for example i continue to see that lineup and i'm like how is this team not in first place how do they not win more yeah, ball games look crazy. at their pitching staff yeah. and it's, it's it's just crazy um and it and and same with us in in 13 obviously i wasn't clicking on all cylinders as a as a starter in that rotation so um, so that didn't help, but he, he went through all those tough moments to be presented that opportunity in 2015. And, he delivered. and even in game six against Kansas city, not to dwell, but in game six against Kansas city, Jose Bautista hit two home runs in that game. So what it's like, what do you want this? What more do you want from this guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, very, 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 very well deserving. Obviously I, yes. again, a guy who grinded throughout his career found a home in Toronto and and made the most of it and he made every Toronto Blue Jay fan believe and 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 he brought some of that 92 93 magic back um obviously to that stadium freaking packed every single night and I remember they used I remember I got released in 2015 and these guys would always text me and say you know how we used to be able to walk the streets with no problem in Toronto he's like Honestly, nowadays we can't. Yeah, we can't even like show our face because they all of a sudden became instant celebrities after all that stuff went on in the playoffs. And obviously, uh, Bautista, the bat blitz game, and he he told me a great story about how that day, obviously, he drove into the stadium not knowing what was going to happen that night. He drove his little scooter, so <laughs> when he had to leave the stadium, he had to go through all the fans in a scooter and people are trying to stop him. He's like, dude, I didn't know what was going to happen that night. So I didn't drive my car. I drove my scooter. So it was hilarious trying to 
bob and weave through traffic uh outside of the rogers center so that i thought that story was pretty cool when you take a look at obviously like this is a bit far-fetched what i'm gonna say next but when you like you look at the hall of fame i'm not saying that jose batista is gonna be in the hall of fame but i'm saying that when you take a look at a body of work of a player like there's guys that aren't in the hall of fame like don mattingly who was literally like the biggest star in baseball for a period of time. Mm -hmm. You look at someone like Jose Bautista who has, you know, he, he didn't win the MVP award or anything like that, but I mean, there's this big stretch where he led the league in something or other during that stretch. You know, Mark Grace had the most hits of any player in the nineties, not in the hall of fame. It's like, when, when do these guys get acknowledged? They don't. So that's why this level of excellence thing is so important. Because someone like Jose deserves his flowers, and he's not going to get it in Cooperstown. So why not just uh, have the Blue Jays treat this guy like the legend that he is? And it's it sucks because, you know, careers don't end great. They don't. They just don't. It's very rare that a guy finishes up with a team in, like, a positive way. Jose is no exception. It, like, didn't end great. Uh, and then he kind of, like, you know, nothing really happened after he left. So he <laughs> just, like, rode off, not even into the sunset. He just kind of, like... Never really officially retired, even. Uh, so to see him get his flowers, I think it's well deserved. And uh, yeah, you're a good friend of his, so it must be exciting for you to to see your buddy get get his name up in the in the rafters, so to speak. It, it's gonna be awesome, and obviously, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there, um, celebrating with him. Um, and it's one of those things where, again, like you said, he's a guy that deserves his flowers. He 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 put he put up for this organization and 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 did his thing and went out there and and grinded every single day he wanted to win and i mean i think i I feel like when you played against him you you hated playing against him uh you didn't you disliked the guy and and all that stuff but i think he he went about it the right way and 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 when you do that i think um things like this happen and and obviously um you mentioned hall of fame and stuff like that i mean if there's one name and based on looking at numbers i mean edwin encarnacion his numbers are crazy, man. I, I mean, I, I took a deep dive to, into him a little bit not long ago. And I was like, wow, like, I mean, some of these numbers are a lot better than a lot of Hall of Famers. Let's let's uh, let's, let's let's table that. Let's save it for the next episode to talk exactly, about yeah, it would be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, when, when you think when you think that era, you obviously think Edwin and, and Jose, yeah. Jose and Edwin and, and back to back. And and then, you know, with iconic home runs, I mean, Edwin had a, a pretty sure. good one himself, too. So. Again, they, they fed off each other. Yeah, the, the parrot and everything. I mean, yeah, it'll, it'll be good to see them and, and celebrate with, with, with Jose. I'm sure Edwin's going to be a part of it too. And again, very well-deserving for him. And, and, and I'm sure it's an honor. Obviously, the Hall of Fame is one thing, but I feel like when a team recognizes you like that in a way where your name's going to be forever up there and every time you go to the stadium, it says Jose Bautista. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yes, it does not. I agree with you. And the baseball gods work in a very funny way because, like, the same week that Jose Bautista is going to be honored, uh, Tim Anderson takes the heat off of Jose for getting punched in the face. By I said the same thing, man. I said the same thing. I was like, thank goodness. Like, it couldn't have happened at a better time. And, yeah. and, and, and you know what? It's unfortunate what happened, but, I mean, it's baseball and sometimes uh, – the you difference know, between like Batista and Tim Anderson is Batista didn't go down. <laughs> didn't go down. He's no. got a stronger jaw. Yeah. Stronger jaw. But his career was like, <laughs> I feel like Jose's career was never really the same after that. I really am sad about to say that. But I feel like his confidence like never came to the way it was after that happened. It, I mean, it, again, I think it's one of those things where I'm sure it, uh, I think about stuff like that, like Tim Anderson, Jose, and and – you think about everywhere they go on the road when they're playing, they yeah. hear that Echoing. every single time sure. they probably yeah. hear it. And, and it, 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 I'm sure it gets old. It doesn't, it doesn't get fun or anything like that, or you can't joke about it because everyone saw it. I mean, freaking Odor, I believe has a painting of it. They have a painting of it in Texas. Right. I mean, I think somebody, a, a artist did it. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to do something in Cleveland for Jose Ramirez. So it's one of those things where I feel like it never really goes away, but I, it kind of happened at a good time. Did on the, inter the internet's undefeated, but I saw someone put like Ramirez throwing a punch with like Jake Paul in the ring. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, people are quick, man. People are, are quick, and again, it, it's 
And you know what? I it, I know sometimes, you know, stuff like that happens on a baseball field, but you never really see two guys square up, like, literally like that. It was so, literally like, okay. It was like, yeah, yeah chill or so, something. <laughs> you know what? To for for Tim Anderson, I I I tip my hat because he 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 squared up. Hey, he wanted a piece of him. He squared up and 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 he lost, but at least he squared up. And he I did. always say this: sometimes when you see all this bickering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it's like, hey man, if you want to go get someone, go get someone. He's out there. Whether it's the pitcher, whether it's the hitter, and stuff like that, go get him. Like go get him. Nobody's holding you back, so don't right. be a tough guy talking crap. But the, get difference, the difference, though, in the two situations, obviously, Tim Anderson and Jose Bautista, both polarizing guys. So, like, them getting hit, people are going to jump all over. Oh, them. yeah. But the guy yeah. who does the hitting in this instance, uh, Ramirez is, like, a nicest guy in baseball type of reputation, whereas Odor <laughs> is Odor. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. And and I've had a chance to interact with Jose Ramirez, and he is, really is the nicest guy. I mean, the guy sent an apology text message for goodness sake to Tim Anderson. And he said, he's waiting to hear back from him. And cause he says, he's like, I don't want to be known as his player. I'm not this type of player. Like I'm not, I yeah. feel like he's, he's a great baseball player and I respect One everything he does the on the game. field. And, and for him to be able to come out and say that, I, I think it takes a lot of guts and, yeah, and I it, totally agree. he, he could have easily said like, you know what, screw that guy. Like, you know, I, I knocked, I knocked his ass out. Didn't yeah. say any of that. It was like uh, Terry I, Francona kind of did, but he didn't. <laughs> but uh, it's funny, like Tim Anderson, sort of fo always following Batista. Like you know, Batista bat toss. Then like, who gets known for being like an obnoxious bat tosser? Tim Anderson. Now Tim Anderson following in Jose's footsteps, getting into a base brawl. All right, we got to wrap it up, Ricky. But before we wrap it up, we're going to take a question from our listeners. Uh, if you guys want to be a part of the show. Uh, we are going to have a segment at the end of every episode called the full count where, you know, it's three and two and Ricky's got to make a, a decision gun to his head to do something. Uh, he's got to make the right pitch. And uh, if you want to make our full count question, all you got to do is reply to any of the posts that you see on the at Bodog CA Twitter page, or you can uh, send a DM or you can reply on YouTube, uh, wherever the Bodog socials are or wherever you're watching or listening to this, uh, correspond right in say you want to be a part of this and if we pick your question ricky will answer it and uh, we actually have already sourced via social media knowing that they were going to be recording uh our, our comeback episode there was a message from a rosalie in brampton ontario who is going to get herself a 25 dollar bow dog bonus congratulations rosalie if we pick your question you do get that free 25 dollars to play whatever you want on bow dog and she wants to know ricky how would you pitch on a three and two count to Shohei Otani? I, I I think I gotta go with my best pitch. Um uh or yeah, I should say my best off speed pitch, uh, which is my changeup. For sure, one hundred percent. One hundred percent three two change up. He's sitting fastball, and that's what I'm thinking, and that's probably what he's thinking. He's not he's not gonna he's not gonna give in, and I'm gonna Pull the string, baby. And in real life, if this happens, what is the result of that? What do you think happens? You think he swings hopefully and misses? A, hopefully a swing and miss. <laughs> it is Otani, though. <laughs> he does get out, though. He does get out. He does get out. He does get out. But, you know, what if first base is open? Are you maybe just like... Then you're you're thinking more of, uh, all right, I'm not losing here. I'm going to try and bounce it. And hopefully I get a swing on it. That's what I'm thinking, because as the great Matt Chapman said, that's the only guy who can hit on that lineup. <laughs> you said it a lot more uh, family friendly than he did. That's going to wrap up our comeback edition of Talking Points. Uh, Ricky, it's been a pleasure. It always is. And have a great time uh, with Jose and the rest of the guys celebrating him. And uh, hopefully when we reconnect in a couple weeks for our next episode, there'll be more fun winning things to talk about. As uh, we head into September, the most exciting month in baseball, September around the corner. Uh, we'll check back in again before September. Uh, have a good one, Ricky. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Stu. Great to see you again. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I am Stu Stone. That's Ricky Romero. This has been Talking Points, powered by Bodog.net. Remember, for all of your baseball action, home run props, uh, whatever you want, get in the action with Bodog.net and uh, become a winner today. 
Uh, this has been Talking Points. We'll see you next time.